Hey, this is Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. For a while now, I've been talking about doing a writing test with the new Noodler's Ahab Flex Pen, and I thought it's finally time to get it done. So anyway, here's the pen. I've got it all inked up. I'm going to do a writing comparison between the original Piston Fill Noodler's Flex Pen and the Ahab. So let's see how it turns out. All right, it's been a long time waiting, but I finally have a writing test here for you for the new Noodler's Ahab Flex Pen. Now, this is the second flex pen that's come out. The original I have right here, and it is still offered as of the making of this video in 2000, uh, November 2011 here. I uh, inked up both pens, and I'm going to compare the two because I think it's pretty well known out there. At least you can see a lot of reviews and stuff about the original pen. But the Ahab is a brand, brand new pen that's just coming out. Um, there are some people who are just starting to get their pens, and so reviews are starting to get out there. But for those of you still curious, I thought I'd go ahead and compare the old and the new because there are some distinct differences between the two pens. So I inked up both pens with uh, our Goulet exclusive Noodler's Purple Heart. Uh, this is an ink that we designed with Nathan, and uh, it works pretty well on a flex pen. It's a lubricated ink. It has pretty good shading, and I personally like it a lot, of course, because I helped design it. But <laughs> it's uh, anyway. So I thought it would be a pretty good ink to use. Uh, so I will go ahead and do a writing test, and and forgive me because I am definitely no. Uh, you know, artist, I'm not all that wonderful with a flex pen. Uh, I'm just going to be kind of scribbling around and I'm a total hack, but uh, hopefully I can at least show you enough so you can get an idea of what's going on uh, here with the pens. So this is the original Noodler's Flex. So it's, uh, it's smaller, much smaller than the Ahab. I'll go ahead and show you both. The pen design is different. It's got, you know, kind of a different filling mechanism. The Ahab holds more ink. Um, the nib is a little bit bigger. But the overall design of the nib is the same. It's a steel nib with a slit that goes all the way up into the body of the pen. And that allows the tines to flex and spread and give you some line variation. And that's kind of different than most fountain pens are designed. So um, one of the characteristics that's kind of unique about these flex pens is that it actually requires very little pressure to write. Here I'm just kind of letting the weight of the pen determine how thick that line is going to be. So this is about as thin as you can get, which I would attribute to probably a fine nib. Okay, and the Ahab, which is the one I have here, is going to be very, very similar. So the uh, actual tip of the nib is just about identical in size to the uh, original Noodler's pen. So here I can flex it out a little bit and you can see what kind of variation you can get when you press. Now you do have to press it down a little bit and get some good force. Um, one of the complaints that I do hear about this pen from people who really, really, really know their flex pens is that it requires a lot of pressure. And I wouldn't say it requires a lot of pressure. It requires more pressure than with most 14 karat flex nibs. But then again, at the same time, you're talking about a $14 and a $20 pen here, as opposed to vintage pens, which may cost you hundreds of dollars. So. The Ahab flexes a little bit easier, I feel, just a little bit easier than the um, than the older version or the original version flex pen. Um, I don't know if it's because of the length of the nib is a little bit longer, or um, I did hear from Nathan that the alloy was actually changed just a little bit in the Ahab pens to make the tines just a little bit, or sorry, to make the uh, the nib a little bit more flexible. Um, so the, uh, the actual force that it takes to flex the nib is just a little bit less, I feel, in the Ahab than in the original. Now, as far as what you're actually able to do with it, or, you know, are you able to flex it anymore? You know, um, I don't see like any huge difference between the original and the Ahab in terms of you know, how much it'll flex. If anything, I would say the Ahab probably does flex just a little bit wider. Again, I don't know if it's because of the, the alloy or because of the size of the nib, whether it will actually do it. See, there I'm trying to flex it really to the max. And I'm able to get a pretty good swath there with, with the original and the Ahab. I feel like I'm able to get just a little bit wider. It's really thick though. I mean, you're talking like this is upwards of three to three and a half millimeters. Um, and I'm really kind of pushing it to the max. You can see there how much those tines are flexing. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit at all and get you a close up of that. 
just to show how much the tines are really spreading there. I mean, I almost feel like I'm using a paintbrush at this point <laughs> because it's just so wide. There you go. And then back to the original. See, I'm able to get about the same width with the original. I feel like I have to press a little bit harder. See, I, I broke, got a little bit of railroading on there. Okay. Now, when you're writing this wide, you definitely need to slow down. So you can see here, you know, there's really not a huge difference between the old and the new. If anything, I think the size of the pen might be as much a factor as anything in terms of how easy it is to flex, because I feel like the larger diameter of the Ahab and the, uh, you know, just the girth of the pen, the fact it's a little bit bigger and easier to hold in my hand, especially because I have very large hands, I feel like that makes it easier to flex than in the original because the original, I, it, it just doesn't feel like I have as much to grab onto. And I think there's a lot of people that kind of feel that way. But uh, anyway, hopefully this is able to help you out. I know I didn't really draw anything of significance here, but again, I'm not an artist. Uh, I just have been playing and doodling with these pens a little bit. So I hope this was able to help you out. And uh, I'm really eager to see what kind of reviews people are going to start doing. You know, the one people that actually have artistic talent. I'm excited to see what people are able to do and see how these uh, pens really stack up in an, in an artistic standpoint. I hope my comparison was helpful for you. Uh, I am impressed with the Noodler's Ahab pen, I gotta say. I think uh, given the price difference, uh, it's definitely uh, a more value for the money, and I think that a lot of people are going to be really happy with the Ahabs. Now, of course, I do sell them, so take what I say with a grain of salt. Look around and see what other people are saying about these pens if you're interested in it for yourself. But as for me, I'm pretty impressed with it. So if you have any questions, you can always email me at brian at Thanks a lot, and right on.